Hi there, uh, following on from a uh, post earlier on in the group, a conversation with uh, a chap in the States, I thought I'd post this little video showing uh, a method um, of how to uh, populate multi-view scenes quite easily if you have a stream deck um, and a couple of the scripts running in the background. Uh, there, there are other ways, obviously, of uh, creating or copying scenes using virtual inputs or blank inputs and then copying from. Uh, so there's no real right and wrong. This isn't a definitive way by any means. It's just a, a quick way I use for uh, for a lot of the sort of more straightforward corporate shows I do. Uh, we don't necessarily have triggers or anything attached to uh, to scenes that you might need to copy or look at. Where it might just be very very much a case of straightforward scenes, and you just need to change what the content is in those scenes. Um, so you can see here, got a very basic setup, which is with eight callers and slides, VTs, and two backgrounds, uh, and then a couple of scenes that I like and they've been signed off. So you've got a caller and slides, caller on their own, a two caller shot, and a three caller shot, all with a background layer. Now what we can see here in the stream deck is that the 12 main layers I'm selecting content for, callers one to eight, and backgrounds one and two, and slides and VT appear there. Um, and then what we can do is choose uh, a selector layer and then assign it to a multi-view layer element. So in this way, we can say, well, I want input two to be on multi-view layer three. So I'd select layer two and put it as multi-view layer three, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can populate the lists. Now, what we might want to do, if, say, for example, this we have, say, caller one and slides, we might want a scene where it's caller two and slides. So, as I say, there's other ways of copying that to a new slide or a new scene. Uh, there's various different ways. No right and wrong, but this way, what I do is I use the hover function. So I can copy a hover scene on this button here, and then any scene that I'm hovered over, if I'm going to press that button, it'll create a new scene, it'll rename it, and put it into preview. So once it's in preview, I can then change what the content is. So we want the, so the background one is multi-view one, that's okay on the background, but we want to put multi-view layer two, to be caller two now. So I can select two and caller two. So two and caller two. And you can see there now it's caller two in slides. Or if I want to call the three in slides, I could go three, four, five, etc. etc. But I'll put it back to two. And we can see there we've created a state that is two in slides. So likewise on this one here, we have two shot that is callers one and two. Uh, we might want to have callers two and three together. So again we can just copy that scene there. It repopulates it, loads into preview, still with the same settings that we had before. It's got callers one and two, but now it's in preview. We can say, right, okay, multi view pip two, we want to be caller two, and we'll send caller three to pip three. So we've got callers two and three. Again, we can just do this again if we want to create one that's got callers one and three in. So we can just hover over that, create a new scene, and very easily say, right, caller one goes to multi view two. And now I've got callers one and three. So quite quickly, we've created different copies of that and populated with the same information. Uh, so we might get a situation where we've now we've got one in slides and we've got two in slides, we might want to do three in slides. So I'll just hover over that, press the button, it gets populated there. We can change this now. Multi-view two is the one we want to be called a three, but we might change the background. So we might put background two to be multi-view one. So now we've got that with a different slide layout. So we have caller one with a red background and slides, caller two with a red background and slides, caller three with a yellow background and slides. So in this way, using these quick buttons, it's quite easy just to create new scenes from existing scenes and then quickly choose what you want to populate it with. Uh, we also have the option here, rather than choosing individual inputs, so there, there's one, two, three, it comes up there at the bottom, which input you selected, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. We also have the hover input to choose to select as well. And then we select that, that populates that with minus three, which is a variable vMix uses to say that you're uh, looking at whatever the input selected is what you're hovering over. So in this one here, we might want, say for example, not to use any of the one to eight, two backgrounds or slider VTs. We might want this color bars test that could be a holding logo or a still or a bit of information or something that's not used often that we don't need to have all the time and, and use up too many buttons. If you've only got one stream deck, um, you might only be able to sort of have 12 here that you use all the time. If you've got two, then the world's a bit more, a bit more of, of your oyster. It's no real limit. But you also got this function here, hover input, where we can choose whatever we're hovering over and select that by pressing the relevant multi-view there. So in this one, multi-view three is currently the slides, but we might want multi-view three to be 
color bars. So I'll just hover over that, press MultiView 3, and whatever I'm hovering on fills up MultiView 3. So if I hover over Caller 8 and press MultiView 3, it'd be Caller 8 that fills it. Or if I press Caller 3 or Caller 4. So you can populate, I'll go back to the color bars, so you can populate with things that aren't necessarily part of the buttons by using this hover input. Uh, you've also got there a blank input button, which just creates, uh, we blank all the, the inputs on there, and a brand new input as well, which just creates a blank input there. So blank there, we'll choose a blank there. So if we go back to this one here and choose blank, it comes up as minus two, which I'm using there to populate as blank. So if I go back into this scene and put multi-view three, it would just blank it out. And I could repopulate it with the hover. So I go to hover, you see it's changed there, and I can put multi-view three back to in my color bars. So there's the options there. We can uh, create from a hover, create a new input, which are the old way of doing it, but that would, again, you see, change the number and populate it into preview. So if I create a brand new input, it now becomes scene 23 and loads it ready to populate. And then there's the, the other ways of creating scenes, like you might just um, copy a multi-view there or paste an existing multi-view there. So you could populate that quite easy and then go into the content. So for example there, I could pop it in as multi-view layer one, it might be the background, multi-view layer two, could be called the two, multi-view layer could be called the three, and then go to the main setting itself and choose a layer and populate it. And there's your calls populated. So this, it's a sort of mixture and match of the two different ways of doing it. Um, but yeah, if, you, if in the notes below, there's a link to upload the, uh, the remix file here as an example, the Stream Deck page there, which is just a one page um, that links to your vmix instance, as well as a couple of scripts. There's a script there that runs on the hover input button and a script there that runs on the copy hover scene. But aside from that, it should all work quite nice easily out of the box. Um, any comments, uh, drop me a line.